Yay. Okay. Duh. <laughs> it was in the other screen. Okay, so today is the 27th. It's kind of lazy. It's, it's a cloudy day over here in Houston and it seems like it's going to rain as well, same as in Canada, Annie. So uh, guys, uh, as usual, let's start with our prayer. And uh, just a brief moment for us to calm down our thoughts, our hearts, and uh, elevate our thoughts and uh, stay quiet for a minute and ask our mentors for protection, for inspiration. Dear mentors of each one of us, may our study today and always be filled with peace, growth, and love. May your blessings, Jesus, shower upon the whole world and grant, grant upon each one of us bright, healthy, charitable, and peaceful days to come. Master Jesus, please make our journey a happy one, not by shielding us from sorrow and pain, but by strengthening us to bear it if it comes. Shine your light in us, through us, over us. Protect us, each member of this group, our family members, our houses, our offices, and friends from any undesirable influence. We ask for your guide and protection for our lives and the life of our family members and friends. Set your way before us, Jesus. May we make a difference in this world for your glory and purposes. And so be it. Amen. Amen. So today, uh, actually, uh, we were supposed to have the mechanics of medium sheet, uh, but then Louise and Livia, they cannot make it today. And uh, Josie, she, she also is, is, is traveling this week. She was not anticipating to travel this week, but she's traveling. So uh, because of that, we decided to postpone the mechanics of mediumship meetings for next uh, Saturday. And then uh, by then we can cover this last two topics over here. Um, book suggestions. Um, uh, and Lynn, I'm glad that you are here because I was about to suggest these two books. Um, I did uh, read this one. I didn't read this one, but those are books that Lynn suggested. And uh, this first one, Life uh, uh, on the Other Side, yeah. I read the synopsis. This one, I read this book and uh, it seems to me like they, 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 they are very good. They're very consistent in between them and they bring elements that is very uh, consistent with this book that I read many years ago, uh, Missionaries of the Light from Chico Xavier. And uh, as a matter of fact, this, these three books, they seem to have same elements as this book, The Messengers. Um, right. Anna? Yes. Uh, the Sylvia Brown books, first of all, the New York Times bestsellers, they're well known. Mm -hmm. um, and the validations that Sylvia Brown has, has been documented over and over again, as far as the other side, uh, all the processing, the temples, the halls, it's a very accurate, well-validated account mm -hmm. of life on the other side. It's, it's well, well known and supported by many other uh, books in the literature. Now, Hello From Heaven, is an outstanding book for ADCs, uh, After Death Communication by the Guggenheims. In fact, they had, it was done in Canada. They have oh, over uh, at least two to 3,000 people who were documented regarding the ADCs and they broke the ADCs, the After Death Communication down to various categories, all mm -hmm. right? You know, the electronic uh, communication, everything was broken down. Mm -hmm. and it's if you really want to learn about how spirit or people on the other side truly 
the diversity and how the spectrum of how they communicate with us, it's an outstanding book. It's been around for decades, like Sylvia Brown's books. They're hallmark books, highly, highly recommended. They're, they're easy reads. Yep. They probably books could be read literally in a week, each book. So yep. those two highly, rec and they do go along with supporting the missionary um, of the light, et cetera, and some other, which have been validated too. Yeah. So those are highly recommended for anyone. Yeah, thank you, Lynn. Yeah, so if you guys want to take notes, um, just let me know. I can send those the slides as well. And they're inexpensive too. Let me add, these oh, yeah. books are very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, just a reminder, next September the 10th, so Flavio Dias de Moraes, he's a mechanical engineer. He'll be talking to us about um, this presentation. Um, he he uh, i have told you many times but uh, it's really good one is a uh, analytical considerations uh, in regards to reincarnation and uh, when i um when i uh, first met flavio and he was uh, presenting this the same topic i, I remember uh, that that presentation uh, reminded me of art so Art, I think uh, you, you should not miss this one because uh, you will like it. There are lots of uh, uh, thoughts for you to, to consider in regards to reincarnation. Um, and uh, if, you if you guys remember by October, uh, August the 6th, we have uh, uh, Sonia Rinaldi with us and um, Perhaps what you do not uh, know is before we start with our meeting, before we started with her presentation, she did some tests uh, uh, with me uh, and uh, uh, the parents of this kid. Um, they lived in, I want to say in, in UK, uh, in England, I guess. And um, and uh, so the test was done like uh, for 20 minutes or so before the presentation. And then after that, uh, she did some recordings and uh, she shared with me some of those recordings and some of them, they are so amazing that I asked her to, to share with you guys uh, in advance. She didn't uh, publish this yet. She didn't um, uh, uh, post anything. But um, I thought it was so, so, so nice, you know, so clear, some of those recordings. So I, I wanted to, to share with you guys so you guys can hear. So basically, we were, uh, we were tracking if we could uh, record anything from uh, this kid, uh, Wes, and, uh, and his his parents, they were in the same, the same uh, connection. So uh, we were just asking questions and then Sonia was uh, recording something. And then later on, she, she, she verified if she was kept, if she was able to capture something. So let's see, I, I have over here three audios. Let's see if you guys can hear something, okay? And then you guys tell me what you heard. What do you like most about the place you are located? Okay, so it's not gonna, oh no. I was Let shocking value. It's not. Repeating. I was shocking value. I wonder. Let me unshare and, and uh, just a sec. Let me, what is my presentation now? What do you like most about ah, the place not you working. are located at? I was shocking value. Let me see if it's going to work without the presentation. Just a sec. What do you like most about the place you are located at? No way. At? I cannot hear I anything. Can value. you guys hear anything? Repeating. Can you? Yeah. I was shocking value. 
I cannot hear the, 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 the kid talking. The questions. You can hear me, but can you hear the, the, the audio? No. Okay. Yeah, because I cannot hear the audio for some reason. Uh, that's so unfortunate. I will uh, I will check and uh, I will try to to do it next time. I will check what's what didn't work, but uh, it was working this morning when I checked. Anyway, it was awesome because we I was asking him some questions about uh, whether or not he was in the school, what he was learning, and uh, he was answering some of these questions. It was really nice. I, I'm gonna bring next time. But anyway, the video with Sonia is already available in the, in the YouTube. Anna, Anna dear, yeah. may I say that Tom Kerr is an expert on getting voice to work on the computer and he might have an opinion and he's right there with his sound turned off. And, yeah. and there are more than one um, volume control is all I can say, because uh, uh, you noticed that I just had a problem with my mm -hmm. um, thing. <clears throat> so if you want to make somebody else a co-host, then you can go out and come back and then I bet it'll work. Unless Tom's got better ideas. Yeah, I, I guess I, I like suspect that the, 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 the problem is the way that I, um, I was shown that value that I, uh, uh, I put those those files in here. We can hear the it. we can hear the recording, Anna. Can you? It's not, yeah, we can. I cannot. No, I just hear a voice saying a few a sentence, and that's all. Each time the voice just says that same sentence. Okay. Okay. And uh, can you hear what those sentences are? Because I cannot. No, just a few words. Yeah. Okay. Let me check what's going on, and I will. I, I think will I heard you saying something. Can you about see me? School. I just okay. So some announcements. Um, by October the tenth, between October the tenth and sixteenth, that will be the same uh, event. is an online event, free of charge. Several speakers will be available every single day. That will be one topic being covered. Uh, over here, you see this um, the, the 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 title of this event is in Portuguese, is because they didn't um, they they do not have the the English version of their flyers, but uh, it will be ready pretty soon. So, um, but again, this is about a global gathering about uh, of uh, friends of Chico Xavier, and uh, they'll be talking about not only uh, Chico's books and uh, his legacy, but also uh, topics associated with uh, uh, spirituality or spiritism. Um, and uh, also here, November the 5th, that will be one uh, symposium is, uh, is in person. I did ask them if there will be some online uh, connection somehow. They told me the chances there will be. So several speakers um, covering now different topics along the day, November the 5th. Uh, but if you happen to go, <laughs> if you happen to want to be there, it's going to be uh, at Rice University, Houston, Texas, um, the whole day. So this is actually the 16, uh, the, the, the number 16 uh, symposium. And uh, this is celebrating the 25th anniversary of the US Spiritist Federation. And uh, this symposium is held annually. It's a full day event, of course, and, uh, and brings to, together um, everyone interested in spiritism. So um, there will be a lot of uh, presentations, roundtables, um, several speakers from different places here in US exploring uh, this topic, uh, time, 
of renewal, of time for renewal, uh, healing, and regrowth based on uh, principles of the spiritism. So um, it also, uh, this, this symposium provides an opportunity to take life to a new level of self-awareness and, and purpose. So it's gonna be really nice. Um, but anyway, if, if there will be any uh, online presentation, I'll let you guys know. And uh, if there will be any recording out of, out, of the, out of that, I will let you guys know as well. Uh, all right, so last time we, um, seems like uh, we stop at question 721. He's still talking about law of preservation. Uh, and the question was, throughout the course of time and among all populations, there have been those who have lived a life of ascetic mortification. Is an ascetic life ever praiseworthy? And the answer, ask yourselves to whom such a life is useful. And you will have the answer to your question. If such a life only serves the person who leads it and it prevents that person from doing good, it is a form of selfishness, regardless of the pretext it hides behind. Through multiplication, according to Christian charity, is to impose self-deprivation and work upon yourself for the benefit of others. So with that, uh, okay, so let me... Take this to number 722. Is there any virtue in abstaining from eating certain foods as practiced among various, various religious or ethnic groups? Is there any virtue in abstaining from eating certain foods practiced among various religious or ethnic groups? What do we think? Nothing, that, that means nothing in the spirit world. Yeah, I, uh, I'm about to, yeah, because um, everything about spirituality is, or our experience in my mind is, um, is like us trying to live this physical experience, but at the same time, trying not to be very much attached to it, right? To, to, to the material world. Len, please. I mean, a classic example, if you look at Christianity, the Catholics, we never could eat meat on Friday. That was the big one. Yeah. Don't eat meat on Friday. And then it's meaningless, really. I mean, uh, for the spirit world, the universe, the other side, it was just um, uh, religious indoctrination that was passed down through the centuries. But as mm -hmm. far as true significance and meaning, it was zero. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Len. Uh, Giles? Yeah, I want to um, not uh, agree completely with Len. Um, I was raised in Ireland and uh, they served fish on Fridays and that mm -hmm. was the, the story. You, uh, you, you had to eat fish on Fridays. We had the famous buffalo fish fries. <laughs> and since I, and since I didn't rice. take I didn't take notes about what my next question is, I've forgotten it. So, so I'll lower my hand and let you get on with it. Um, no, I wanted to say about the uh, um, vegetarian outlook. The um, it's only going to be it's going to be a short time um, that uh, humans need to eat animals because. Children need animal protein, I think, up to at least the age seven. Um, then Len can confirm this or deny it. And generally, children need animal protein. Now, animal protein is, is a mystery because there are so many different proteins and they're folded so many different ways. It's this, the mystery is being resolved as we speak. People are working on these things. So the time will come when uh, humans don't need uh, to eat animal meat at all. And the awful thing that's going on right now is the, the slaughterhouses are so embarrassed about their dirty behavior that they won't let anybody in 
to show what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether any of you were aware of this, but if a uh, slaughterhouse, if you get in, try and get into a slaughterhouse with a camera, look out, they'll go, they'll have guns uh, to, uh, to prevent you because they do not want humans, the rest of us to see what's actually to happening. See what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, in common to that, Giles, uh, metabolic intake as far as protein is essential, especially in the formative years. Yes, you got to have a source of protein. Now that source of protein, though, can come from many different avenues. All right. Mm -hmm. um, like beans, there's many vegetables that carry high concentrations of protein. So there are substitutes that you can use. Uh, but Yes, but that's essential for your organs, for your tissue. You must have a, a source of good protein, period. That's for your amino acids, et cetera. Everything that you need in your metabolic processes, you got to have protein. Thank you. Thank yeah, well, you. I ate, uh, ate meat generally until I was age 60. And then I said, then I moved to North Carolina and I took one look at what they were doing with the trucks and the pigs and the animals in it. And everything came came suddenly to to an understanding to stop this giles As of course i can't stop fish. it from... fish is a very big great source of protein yes so but that's that's, yeah. that's also uh, that's also the anyway i um i've stopped it all and 15 years has gone by and all's well art what's your story now, I was going to say that uh, some people do claim when they go on different diets like uh, i know a lady that went on a wheat-free diet, and she made great claims. She had all kinds of energy and that sort of thing. Um, I think, too, that the um, one of the reasons they try to, to and the, the OWASP talks about eating uh, a, um, a meat-free diet uh, that's supposed to increase your ability to, uh, to contact spirit. That uh, never did for me, but uh, there it is. Oh, you mute yourself, Art. We could not hear you, the, the, the last sentence. You mute yourself. Oh, I, I just said uh, I, I tried a vegetarian diet for about 10 weeks and I didn't find anything out to, except that I was hungry for, uh, for some sausage. <laughs> or hot dogs. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, Leda, please. Um, in, in Andrea Luis's books uh, by Chico Xavier, there are two parts in which uh, he mentions about red meat. Uh, one of them is in uh, Astro City. When he tells the story of the, of the city, he... Uh, he stole the story of the city by Lysias, right? Uh, and Lysias tells him that there was a time that even there in the Astro City, they used to have meat uh, uh, in, in, in the, the houses, in the places of work. And then there was a governor. I don't know if you read the book, but if some of you did, you remember that. Uh, and then the governor, uh, said that uh, he wouldn't accept it anymore, but he didn't. He didn't uh, force it immediately on the on the people there. He started by uh, having lectures about food and uh, about health, about how it would, uh, how the meat uh, would make the the people there more connected to earth and to matter mm -hmm. and uh and then uh, there were so many years like five years of of lectures and then he asked uh, people to to stop uh i think that there were like 20 years trying to to enlighten educating. the population and educating them and uh, after after this, like 25 years or 30 years, I don't remember exactly, he uh, no longer allowed this kind of food in Astro City. Uh, and then there was a kind of a riot uh, 
among the population. It was very hard, but he he kept uh, he kept his uh, his the policy. Order, the policy, yeah. Thank you. He he kept it through, and um, he had to stop all communication between Astro City and the Earth for a while. I don't know if it was six months or so, mm -hmm. uh, because of all the the turbulence that was in in between the population. But later on, they got used to it and. Uh, what was the objective of that? That people would, uh, they would pray and feel more connected to the higher realms because otherwise they wouldn't be so uh, connected to the higher, the higher realms, right? Sorry. Um, so the idea was really to detach from matter and not, instead of going closer to matter, well, the idea was get closer to the, to the yeah. higher realms. And they, they thought, because there are other forms in the spiritual realms, there are other forms of uh, uh, breathing and having your uh, your energy for breathing. And they still do, the, at the, the time that he wrote the book, they still had like juices and fruit and lighter, mm -hmm. lighter uh, food for the population, but not the heavy food anymore. And uh, the other part uh, where he, the other book is uh, Missionaries of the Light. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes to, like, uh, like um, Giles was saying, uh, a slaughterhouse, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there they see many, many, uh, many spirits that are lower, addicted. Lower a lower spirits they are very uh, close to matter that. they are addicted to the vital energy that comes when the from animals the killed from the blood and when the animals killed they are mm -hmm. like drug drug addicts they they yeah. live on that kind of um of energy yeah. so um I still, I, I'm not a complete vegetarian. I, I still eat fish and chicken, but uh, I try to, to not have red meat because of that, because of that uh, books by Andrea Luis, because um, I understood that this, this energy from the red meat, it makes you closer to matter, right? That, so that's it. Yeah, thank you, Linda. Yeah, it's, and the, as a matter of fact, that's why uh, in the spiritist centers, they ask the mediums to not eat meat or at least red meat uh, for about a day or two before the mediumistic meetings, right? Because of the, the energy, not exactly because of the energy from the red meat, but because of the energy that is still in the you know in the in that meat uh i mean all the energy coming from uh fears and the sadness of the animal being killed and, and of then, course it's not it's not an imposition right no I mean, no it's there's not like no, a, no. Uh, it's not like a religious thing that you no. cannot do because god will be angry with you it's not no. like yeah. If you do it, nothing's gonna happen. It's just that if you are studying, if you are, if you want to get connected, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then it's gonna be more difficult. Yeah, it's a That's choice. It. It's a yeah. choice. So we we are not in Astro City, mm -hmm. so it's a choice for us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Una, please. Thanks, Una. Just um, my understanding is that all food. Or that our food has vibration that um, even uh, the plants, <clears throat> the plant foods that we consume have mm -hmm. uh, vibrations and consciousness. <clears throat> I was listening to something this evening before you came, before we started our, started our class. And it was to do with a scientist who was looking at plants and the scientist's consciousness was quite high. So he had a thought about burning a leaf on the plant and as he had the thought, he could see the plant kind of squirm and kind of move away mm -hmm. from him and things like that. So mm -hmm. our plants have consciousness, our food has consciousness and the meat we consume 
will carry some of the consciousness of the animal as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. As a matter of fact, if you guys have some time after our meeting, uh, I don't want to, to share this in a recording, but um, I had an experience uh, a couple weeks ago that I would like to share with you all uh, about exactly what you, what you mentioned. And uh, as a matter of fact, with my plants, uh, when I see that they are not doing okay, they're kind of, you know, phasing out, about to die, I just separate them and then I, I kind of talk to them. <laughs> I talk to them and then I, I call them, you know, uh, sons and daughters and I say, hey, mommy is, is very concerned about you, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, thing is, reality or not some of them they recover very well you know after you know treatment like this you know hi Seth, please yes <clears throat> um i wasn't going to bother but when una brought this up um somebody you know i've, I've had this experience with since Stephen, or I, i've read the books about him mm -hmm. and they asked whether there was any um any benefit with being a vegetarian and he said, well, what you are saying is that while animals have life, plants do not have life. Plants have life as well. Sure. So there you are. Um, and yeah, there's a story about a row. So plants are living things and they sense exactly. and can show it. And yeah. afterwards, when you're talking that, I will tell you another experience that scientists did that showed that plants could sense, and they went crazy. With them. But I'll tell you about that later. Yeah. Hold that thought, because what I'm going to share with you all uh, about consciousness and, uh, you know, us being connected to that, it has a lot to do with this. So, so Giles, please, you, you have your... Well, I don't really have anything to say to that, because, of course, plants are alive. Everything is made of spirit, but it's not so much the eating of meat that's awful. It's the treatment of the animals that leads up to eating the meat. Very good point. Yes, that's the and that goes for the fish, for the crustaceans, for the um, what do you call them? Things in the sea, mm -hmm. seafood. Mm -hmm. It goes for all of it, that the, the treatment is so awful, poisonous crap fed to the shrimp and then um, and all of the whole corporation madness of handling this stuff efficiently so they can make more money um that's 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 the reason for being out of this and and of course um, plants are a lower a lower level so um their treatment um is something that that is uh, alien to me that, I, that it's too far, I'm too far away from it to understand how plants don't like to be treated. They're cut, there's the, the fruit of it, whatever it is, and some days later, it comes to my table. So I don't, ex I cannot explain how you could, how you could maltreat a plant once it's cut. Yeah, I, I, all that I know, I do not know what kind of uh, treatment they will react, but for sure they, if we, if we treat them well, you know, like with love, they will respond to that for sure. <laughs> Hi, Sin. Yes. Um, <clears throat> this is a modern um, way of dealing with slaughterhouses and animals. Yeah. Because growing up, it was not like this. Exactly. So that this is a modern way of making money. And the fish farms with antibiotics and growth hormones, I will not eat. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Thank you. Lynn. A few things regarding a hormone injection of foods. There's a lot of clinical evidence now. That's why the uh, puberty stage with, with girls, boys are starting earlier and earlier. Two, there's been a lot of experiments where they looked at chemical reactions in plants. They measured where the plants were threatened or under various stress, 
and they actually could measure various metabolic chemical reactions in response to these various threats and the environment the plants were in. So there is some truth to the fact that plants do respond to emotion to love. Yes, yes. Or yes. The, the reverse of, of being threatened. Len, the point about the plants is that, that once they're cut, you have a field of wheat and then you have five monster um, combine harvesters that go through and harvest a whole lot. Once it's cut, um, I have difficulty understanding how the seed then suffers. Um, that's well, and the same goes for potatoes. Once you pull the potatoes out, the root crop, you pull it out of the ground and put it in a pile somewhere and wash it and do what you do. You can't. How do you stress a dead potato? It, it's like I said, it's something that is a bit beyond my understanding. The experimentation that I was referring to is when the plants are actually in the ground, in the ground. Live, growing. Obviously, yeah. the seed is the only function of the seed has is germination. At mm -hmm. that point, it has to germate to form a mature plant. So its function is different. Thank yeah. you, uh, that's, okay. uh, that's why I think it's okay. acceptable yeah. and there's no psychic um, <laughs> damage brought to the person who eats potatoes and carrots or lettuce. It's been cut, it's brought to your table. What can you do? Yeah. You know, it's either but that it's, or starve to death. But a home, I mean, but really and truly homegrown, this is what happens. An animal will suffer death. And I have seen this in Lapland. And I will tell you that not for this, but for that, because this is taking away now from what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. So, um, so the answer is, uh, so uh, actually, no, Len, you were the last one. Would you please? Uh, Read the answer for us. If sure. you could. Whatever you can eat without harming your health is permitted. Legislators may have prohibited certain foods for a useful purpose and portrayed them as emanating from God to give these regulations greater authority. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that reminds me of the fact about uh, eating uh, meat, uh, pork meat. Right at some time, the, the, the concern was really all the diseases coming from from pork meat. Right, it was nothing about religious, but about right. Yeah, that, go ahead. It's, it's called trigonosis. It's a parasite that yeah. is predominantly uh, infects pigs, like pork, obviously the meat. And years ago in the processing of the pig meat, etc., cetera, the uh, sanitation infection control procedures were not done. So trigonosis was, that's why you had to cook pork very well, very well. to kill the parasite trigonosis. And yep. trigonosis is a very, once you in, in, ingest this parasite, it's a very fulminant process. It's a very painful, it could literally make your, your life miserable and even kill you mm -hmm. i mean so this parasite is a very but it was done the reason why pork as you pointed out anna it's from yes. a health perspective, health perspective infection absolutely. control perspective mm -hmm. yes particularly in hot countries exactly mm -hmm. exactly and also it's the same thing <clears throat> with um shellfish that mm -hmm. was a health matter because there was no refrigeration exactly. one had to be very careful so that was health matters rather than religion. Yeah, so shellfish are loaded with various bacteria. I can lay a long list of bacteria that can do great harm to you if they're allowed to propagate within the fish. In other words, they grow to high numbers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you have to cook them live. Oh. You have to cook, yeah. Heat, proper heat, yeah, is a balance here. You don't want to cook the shellfish were to death where it destroys all the taste and everything else, but no. you want to cook it to a point where you destroy the bacteria. Yes, that's right. So, I mean, you, yes. So, yeah. Very good. Good comments, guys. Uh, 
So next is the 723, does the consumption of, all, of animal flesh by human beings contradict natural law? Does the consumption of animal flesh by human beings contradict natural law? What do we think before we go to the answer? Well, people have been eating meat since day one. Yeah. What I think about this is that if it was really a no-no, was where we put together from the first place, you know, uh, what, I, what I think is, uh, okay, so we human beings, we live or we share earth with the animals because uh, it is one of our uh, responsibilities is to uh, protect, take care <laughs> of these animals. Sorry, and, I'm laughing uh, because the, the answer says that you may fulfill the law of labor, and that doesn't sound very nice to me. Um, the, um, the evolution of humans means that we were jumping around in trees and eating whatever we could lay our teeth on. And there's no um, karma is building very slowly there because a, a lion or a tiger or a cobra does not generate bad karma by killing its prey and eating it, no matter how much its prey suffers, like the, the lions can come and eat something which is still alive. Because they do not have consciousness. They don't have, or they have consciousness, all right, but they're not yet in karma. They're, no, they, they're not they, they do it by karma. instinct. No, but I mean, the thing is that they kill for food. Yes, they don't because they're kill hungry. For pleasure. Yeah. They don't kill and to what, sell it what, and make money. I am, what I'm told is from the um, Native American tribes that when they have the buffalo, mm -hmm. they will speak to the buffalo and ask forgiveness that they must kill the buffalo for feeding the people. Now, I don't know if this is true, but this was what I was told a long time ago, mm -hmm. and that the buffalo then bows his head where exactly they would put the knife to kill it. And the same thing with walking on the grass. They would say, sorry, I have to walk on you because grass is a living thing. Mm -hmm. Well, so we yes, just... we are, but we are children, Hyacinth. And no, no, we, no, we, no, what I'm saying In our is, development. No, no, and... no, what I'm saying is I do not agree with this chicken farms of where they, the, the poor things are picking. Absolutely, each other. absolutely. That's but the that's whole the point of the, But that's of... not about eating meat or eating anything. Okay, because well, it's all living things. Yes, everything is spirit. We know that you can't escape from God. <laughs> no, I'm not all uh, well, whatever. <laughs> no, <laughs> no right. I do understand what you're saying. And, and I'm, I'm just being silly. So don't uh, uh, the the real shame is how none of us, none of us uh, Western white people have learned anything from the American Indians. It was just go ahead and kill them all instead of learning from them. Mm -hmm. And then the Spanish in South America burning all the books. I mean, this mm -hmm. is just so sad, all this stuff. Um, and you are, you are absolutely right. They had uh, methods and systems. And who knows? There's been a variety of them. But who, who's collected all this information? Well, there's dribs and drabs here and there, as you've just uh, pointed out. Sorry, I, I'm basically agreeing with what you're saying. I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to be contentious. Yeah, and uh, in in Brazil, the the native, I do not know how to say this because we do not say it that way. We do, we call we don't call them native Brazilians, but or Americans. But um, those tribes, uh, what they say is uh, about that, you know, about hunting and eating meat, etc. What they say is everything is in balance. And what they are doing is, you know, is for their living is not because they want to do any money of it. 
is what they are living in. They believe in the balance, um, you know, in nature. Precisely. So the same way that they are eating the meat, they also, they protect the forest. They, you know, the, they, they kind of feel themselves uh, not separated from nature, but also a, a part of it. They are part of nature, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so Hyacinth, can you read the answer for us, please? With your physical makeup, flesh nourishes flesh. And without this kind of sustenance, human strength declines. The law of self-preservation requires humans to keep up their strength and health to fulfill the law of labor. They should therefore eat according to the requirements of their bodies. Yeah, so Lynn explained beautifully about that. Uh, thank you. So next one, 724, uh, is there any merit in abstaining from any particular kind of food, uh, food when suffered as a form of penance? It's the same question over and over, but different angle. <laughs> is there any merit in abstaining from any particular kind of food when suffered as a form of penance? You may not eat chocolates or sweets during Lent. <laughs> oh, yes. And if you ignore Lent, you go to hell, where, <laughs> where you are burned and attacked and savagely undone for ever and, and ever and ever. But uh, and no sweet. alcohol, Giles, during Lent. No alcohol, yes. And... <laughs> On Annie, Shrove, and on Shrove Tuesday, which is the day before Lent, we always had pancakes for supper. Did anybody <laughs> else do that? We, we still may. We still celebrate pancakes Shrove Thank Tuesday. <laughs> well, we have parties and dance. Come on, Len, give us the real story. <laughs> well, you know, this thing about Lent, you know, what are you going to give up for Lent? You know, every the food, I'll give up this, give up that. It has no real religious value in man-made fiction mm -hmm. religion, or any spirituals, other side you value at all, spirit world value. It's it's just, I think, evolved through various tradition through the ages. It's as simple mm -hmm. as that. I mean, I gave up nothing for Lent, okay? But we always have Dingus Day. Now, Dingus Day is right after Lent ends. It's a Polish holiday where now you can gorge yourself in any kind of food. You just engulf yourself in food, all right? And uh, it's silly. It's just silly. It's it's these traditions that have no real meaning, but people do it anyway because people it does are have, Len, it does the have one, No, um, no. Len, it does have one effect, and that is the effect of making you feel guilty. And because you haven't done it, and so the priest can get more money out of you when I you say, feel guilty. Guilt. The, the old guilt, yes, the old guilt way, yes, exactly. Hi, say please. I guess. No, I think I think for people who are serious about this, I think they just say it's it's a question of just doing without for a period, mm -hmm. and also. Um, instead of giving up things now, I try to do something to help others during that time. So this is just a question of how you want to express this. Mm -hmm. Because during this time, there was, for Jesus, he was undergoing a lot of trials during this time. Yeah. And this is what they are. So for people who take it seriously and understand what they're doing, it's something else. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned a good point, you know, as, uh, as how you want to express that. And, and I remember uh, one day when I was, uh, I was in college, I was not in my, uh, my parents' home. And uh, one day, it was on a Saturday during the Lent period. And then at Lent period, and, I, uh, and then I recall that I, I had meat the day before on the Friday, and that felt terrible. Because it was the very first time in my life, and I felt terrible. And then I thought, "What the heck? I'm, I I don't do this because of a tradition. I do this because, you know, uh, it's my way to think about, like uh, Hyacinth said, of Jesus 
uh, tribulation and, uh, and, and that was it. it. has nothing to do with the meat or with the tradition, but it was that period of the time that I especially was thinking about uh, Jesus' uh, troubles and tribulations. So, um, so does anyone, okay, so hi, Saint, did you please read the answer? You were the last. Yes. If suffered for the sake of others, however, God cannot regard any mortification as laudable if it is not a serious and useful deprivation. This is why we say that those who practice superficial separation are hypocrites, and that I totally agree with. Yeah, yeah. I I uh, I believe you know if you try to for example not eat meat or uh, not eat something in particular as a minimum what are you trying to do has nothing to do with religion but as a minimum is uh, to me is my interpretation is your uh, way to express it to say you know are you really capable of overcoming this attraction of matter you know attraction of the, the 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 physical all the these physical experiences so can we can you live without it are you really detached from this uh condition that that's it <clears throat> and um 725 what should we think of mutilation of the bodies of humans or animals, for oh, example. Does anyone it, want to comment? Mm -hmm. In some cultures, they beat themselves bloody. <laughs> yes, and in Is other cultures, they do. That's self-flagellation. They do strange self things. Yes. And in uh, some cultures that we uh, that we actually know. They pierce their ears and their nose and their lips and their tongue, and they stick things in it and walk around jangling. <laughs> but it's nothing to do with religion. Well, my, no, of course e not. my ears are pierced. <laughs> yes, that's true. Well, it's of course it's nothing to do with religion. <laughs> None of it is. The flagellation may be. Um, they may use the excuse of religion for it, but it, it's pure bullshit. The, the flagellation of the monks. Oh, let me go and flagellate myself. And who can flagellate me more? Mm -hmm. Come on, give me another stroke. I mean, what is this crap? This is oh, people walking around with a mouth full of scripture and a belly full of hate. No, no, but, I think, no, you guys, I think that there are some people who do this because they really think uh, that this is what required. They've, they've really got, I, off, I, I, got, I can't, got screwed I, I, up. I, I can't think that God is requiring that, but that's what they really think, honestly. Yeah. It's a different step. As any uh, steps of revolution, they, they are in a different step. They really, yeah, I agree with you. Come Tyson. on, Annie. I saw you reach forward for your microphone. Come on, Annie. What's your opinion about mutilation for, for religion? I was just saying hi to Maria. Um, oh. I wasn't reaching for my microphone, but since I have the floor, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I would have to think about it for religious purposes. Um, I did just have a conversation with someone regarding what you spoke about Giles of piercings, um, and tattoos, which are, uh, very, very common nowadays, um, for, for religious purposes, I, I don't know. Have to are think tattoos, about that. Are tattoos and piercing for for all of these decorate is that for religious? I never knew. I never understood it was religious. No, I don't not. think so. No, no, no it's, they were it's just... vanity. It's vanity, hyacinth, and and there is something in common with people who have tattoos and and piercings all over their face and head, and what that is in common is they are not literate. They don't read. Self disfiguration. Uh, no, 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 I can't see. I can't see that code. because that's very Anyone popular here. The Da Vinci Code. Linda, please. 
Um, so I, I think that God is all about uh, what's inside of you, your spirit, your intention, your exactly or your purpose, and not about uh, what you do with your body outside of you. Of exactly. course, you 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 can't harm your body because uh, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. yeah. You can't harm your body That's, because it, it's uh, something that it's sustain uh, your life, right? Yeah, it's uh, it was given one, right? To, yeah. yeah, it was given to you for a very good reason. So why yeah. are you hurting yourself? So right? he gives it to you, and one day you return it to to him. So, but uh, for him, it doesn't matter if you if you're green or blue or whatever. Dye your hair, or yeah. no hair at all. Yeah. Lady, that's just fashion. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. The exterior doesn't matter in this temporary incarnate body. It's the soul and the heart that counts. Yeah. That's what that's what's important. Yeah. Uh, but uh, my opinion is when you're doing all the uh, uh, tattooing and do all of this disfiguration in my mind, there's also a point of self-respect for yourself and your own appearance. That's not a religious thing. It's more of a uh, just a hygiene, self-respect perspective. Self-esteem, yeah, that, very well said. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Annie. Um, I do remember um, when I was little, I remember the saying, um, your body is the temple of God. Mm -hmm. And in that respect, um, I, I, I don't, I don't agree with piercing. I mean, I have my ears are pierced as well, but as far as um, the the really out there piercings and tattoos and that kind of thing. Um, and also I've, I've noticed on a lot of people, different symbols that are, are more along uh, of a, I don't want to say satanic line, but I mean, certainly demonic type of tattoos and that kind of thing. I, I, I don't think it is when, you know, your body is the temple of God. You're not, like Len said, you're not respecting yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Annie. Una? Yes, because uh, one thing more, Jesus did say, rend your heart, not your garment. The outward show means nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> I just had a question following on from, uh, in kind of on the same lines as what Annie was thinking. So, if so the body is a is an has an energetic grid and it has a, a a chakra system and stuff what do we think about whether piercings and tattoos and stuff interfere with those energy channels or those energy centers and things like that so i wonder about yeah that's a very good question i never thought about about that but um the energy channels would be more of the etheric body in other words it's not the physical body here. Your, your energy channels are more associated with the etheric body, the astral bodies, which are- Len, in, but, order but, to, in, in order to determine what the right place for the, for the um, assaults on the body would be, you need a shaman from uh, an Australian tribe from about a thousand years ago. Um, then, then you might get something with, with <laughs> effect. Can I, can I add uh, something else on what Len said is, uh, yeah, I agree with, with, with uh, what he said is about, you know, not the material body, but uh, when I think about the things that we do to our body that is connected to our mind is, is our state of mind. And then we do to our body. So in a way, we do interfere with, uh, but not because of the body, because of the, the physical condition, but because of our state of mind, I would think. There's something else too, if I may add, to extend that. And that is this clairsentience, merging of energies with mm -hmm. the other side, which is what I do all the time with many entities. It's about the auric fields of energy, it's where mm -hmm. you merge your energies. It's about the soul core energies. So it has nothing to do with this incarnate temporary physical body here. Mm -hmm. The merging of energies, clairsentience, which uh, I do all the time. And that is the auric fields. Step into my energy field is the auric fields. And 
the soul core energy. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing to do Thank with you. the temporary incarnate body here. Thank you, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Lynn. Claudia, please. Yeah, I <clears throat> see the plants and the animals and us as creations of God, as individuations of God. You know, we're all one energy. And, and what's obvious is that plants and the animals do not mutilate themselves. Uh, and they are just as much, you know, God's creation as we are. The only time an animal that I can remember reading about it that is if they're caught in a trap and they chew off their foot to get free, um, in other words, to preserve their life. But we do it for decoration um, and vanity reasons or, or what religions have, have taught us. But I think if we were completely natural, we'd be like the plants and animals and we wouldn't, we totally respect our bodies. Yeah. Um, that, that there are societal things uh, and religious things that are promoted. Um, but, but if we were like the plants and the animals and respected our bodies the way we do in terms of our being God's creation and individuations of the one, um, no, we would not. Um, we would not mutilate ourselves, or or do any of those things. They're they're tribal or societal or mm -hmm. religious, but they're not. God require that. Agree. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you, Leda. About the tools, uh, I I don't believe the. They really affect your your chakras, but uh, it's a statement that you give the world. So um, sometimes when you you do that, depending on the message that you're giving the world, people will think about you something, and they will direct their energy to you, and that may affect you. Like um, that's true. Yeah. If people disagree with you, your message, then you may be on the street, on a bus, or in an airplane, and you will receive their their bad energy towards you. That that could happen. Yeah, and I don't think, as a matter of fact, when when any mention about the tattoos and the, you know some of them being not very well or, or very pretty uh, per se. Uh, I don't think people realize what they are doing, you know, it's, it's, it's like uh, eating a lot of sugar, not knowing exactly the harm of what that sugar can, can make to your body, you know, you're just not conscious about everything. Thank you, Lida, very well, very good point. Uh, Gloria, you, you still have, okay, so hi, Saint. I'm, I'm talking to people all the time, as you know, um everywhere and i saw a young man and girl they were heavily tattooed and but there was something that was interesting so i asked him if he would pull up his shirt and show me the tattoo which he did it was saint michael and the dragon because he said I am working with Archangel Michael to fight trouble in the world. Well, he could have blown me down with a feather. I was really, really shocked. I had not expected that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, again, like what Leda was saying, you know, is a, a state of mind, you know, what do you have in your mind? Why do you have that? You know, what message are you? passing on uh okay so so again hi cynthia we're the last one would you please read the uh, answer for us i better start shutting up now <laughs> what is no. the purpose of such a question ask yourselves whether something is useful or not what is useless displeases god and what is hurtful disappoints the purpose of creation Rest assured that God only appreciates sentiments that elevate the soul. It is by practicing divine law and not by violating it that you can shake off your material envelope. Yeah. Any comment on that? 
All right. So seven to six. If the suffering of this world elevates us, depending on how we bear it, are we elevated by that which we voluntarily create for ourselves? So in another world, if uh, in another world words, if we volunteer to suffer, can we get elevated, Giles? It's um, the answer in short is no. Are we elevated by those sufferings which we voluntarily create for ourselves? Well, this is when we are going down some different track and are sucked in by some religious cult and, and uh, create sufferings for ourselves. We walk on our knees all the way to Rome or whatever the various nutcases do. Um, you've you heard of these um, pilgrimages on your knees somewhere and you go a thousand miles like that. This is uh, painful and nonsense because it's putting wrong ideas into your head and then affirming them. And uh, Hyacinth has got some addition to that, which is fine. Thank you. Thank you, Giles. Gloria? I think this is uh, another one of those asking the question way, because we've already talked about if we, if, do we accomplish anything by beating ourselves? Do we mm -hmm. accomplish anything by uh, burning ourselves, mutilating ourselves, walking on hot coals, uh, living in a cave without eating for weeks on. No, God's not requiring that. Yeah. God, it, it's, it's a waste of time and energy. And it's something that's been put into our uh, minds by either our society or our religion or our, the group we hang out with. And uh, what does that possibly accomplish for God? How does that make us closer to what Jesus taught? I don't get it. I just don't mm -hmm. get it. Thank, thank you, Gloria. Hi, Seth. Well, I think there are people who do this in penance. They're sorry for something that they have done or whatever. And they think this I will do to, um, to compensate to right the wrong that I have done. And they do this sincerely. Um, there was an emperor, don't ask me which one here, who used to go on his knee some distance because he felt that um, he, he was proud and whatever and that he was humbling himself for it to show that. So again, it, it's motivated in different ways and we can't really judge what's in people's heart. But it was just to do this. So you see, ha ha, see how good I am. I'm doing this. That makes no, sure. no brownie points, is for sure. Very, very good. Yeah, very good point. Sincerity, I think, is the key, yes. right? Len, please. There's volumes of literature in the afterlife literature, spiritualism literature, validation over validation that our lives, the purpose is learning the lessons, learning love, forgiveness, compassion, gratitude. As we said, our lives, the reincarnation is the teaching tool for the soul learning curve. It has nothing to do with self-flagellation or punishing yeah. yourself, nothing at all. It's about the lessons to advance your spirituality, your spiritual soul and love, all the forms of love, compassion, gratitude, forgiveness, etc. That's what it's about. Uh, and that's why reincarnation is the teaching tool for the soul learning curve. Now, on a personal note, in 2006, Felicia and I went to Portugal. We spent some time in Fatima. And these people were on their knees walking these to the, to the church, okay? Right, the point, right. The point of that was pointless. And they're not increasing their spirituality. It's maybe a motivation of guilt, whatever it is. The whole thing about our reincarnation of lives Hyacinth is learning our lessons of love, forgiveness, compassion, com uh, gratitude. That's what it's all about. Yes, but you cannot say 
if people choose to do this, what they have in their heart while they're doing it. You cannot well, judge. You, it is it's a, not a point of judgment. People all the time will do meaningless things. But you say it's meaningless. I mean, and a lot of it is meaningless. But there are I people who do this sincerely. Yes, but it's all about all the forms of love, compassion, forgiveness, gratitude. That's what it's about and increasing your soul spirituality. So, so there's nothing called being sorry for what you have done? There's many ways you can do it. I sense that's a state of mind, and Len is absolutely right. Self-mutilation is nonsense. Meaningless. I'm not. Well, that's what you say. The other all right, people, all right, all right. Yeah. You say but one we, size we, does we're not, not fit all. We're not going to go agree on this. Yes, we are. I, one size I does will, not fit all. I there will could be a thousand different judge, methods. No, I will not judge another person's intentions. That I, I will see. not do. There's volumes of validation in the afterlife spiritualism literature that is overwhelming, overwhelming validation of the soul learning curve and all the lessons we have to learn. That yes. is what it's about. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and like I said, wow. it's about of learning. And everyone it is has... about the love you have yeah. in your heart and how you deal with fellow men. There are no brownie points. Yeah, and there is but no... I am seriously sorry about something I have done. Yeah. And this is what I choose to do. You cannot judge me. You can you well you can judge me you can call me a fool well that means agree. nothing to me sorry I don't agree thank you oh. thank you all good discussion so Leda there there's a sentence that Louise is, uh, always says uh, about uh, I, I'm not sure about the source but I, I'm sure it's one of Chico Shaver's books uh, he says that there's more merit in losing a finger for someone else, then staying in bed for 10 years, sick in bed for 10 years. Meaning that um, if, you, if you suffer for someone else, uh, there's much more merit in that than just uh, suffering for yourself. Of course, there is merit in suffering. You will learn from suffering. But uh, you learn much more if you're selfless. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. So, guys, um, so Leda, you were the last one. Would you please read the answer? Okay. Uh, just the answer or the yeah, question? Uh, the question and the answer. So it's if the suffering of this world elevates us, depending on how we bear it. Are we elevated by that which we voluntarily create for ourselves? You can only be elevated by natural suffering because they come from by God. Voluntary suffering is worthless when it's not useful to others. Do you think that those who shorten their lives by superhuman hardships as practiced by the bones, farkas, and fanatics of our various religious groups advance their progress by doing so, they should spend their time focused on doing good for their fellow human beings. They should clothe the naked, comfort those who cry, work for the disabled, and deprive themselves for the sake of the unfortunate and then their lives will be useful and pleasing to God. When you are you're experience voluntary suffering for yourself alone, it's selfishness. When you suffer for others, it's charity. These are the commandments of Christ. Very good. All right, folks. So I will stop right here, seven to six, because it's 421 is 21 past the hour. Let me stop recording.